What is going on, people? Welcome to Throw Down Your Questions, episode 299. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I'm joined by Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Adam Vale. Soccer Free Sunday. And Brian Monjoma. What up, people? You already know what time it is, man. Throw down. So, yes, yeah, some, some of us are missing tonight, so let me explain where everybody is. Brett, I don't need to explain shit. Brett, Brett of the wild, as we call him. He comes and goes with the wind. You know, uh, Manny's actually uh, at the movies tonight, people. He is risking his life to see a movie. Uh, no, and all kidding aside, he's at a drive-in, so he's good. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure he's with his buddy Mark. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. And Chris, you know, he's new father, so we may not see him for a while. You know, that's just how it is. Adam knows about that life. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah, Chris, uh, good luck, buddy. We know we still talk to him every day and stuff. It's not like, like he's like dropped off the face of the earth it's just you know daddy you know he's a daddy yeah, now you know he said he sent us pictures of the kids sleeping cute and shit you know looking no. like a baby you know looking like a baby <laughs> that's what babies do they look like babies man you know, how does that happen i don't know man well i could explain it to you but we'll do that off air you know i forgot the ama specials next week yeah that's right yeah how, how are babies made <laughs> throw down <laughs> Well, you know, when a man loves oh. a woman, and sometimes love isn't involved, you know, <laughs> and you know, and if you need infographics, I'll be like, here's this and here's that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Anyway, before we start, a couple of things here. So yes, episode three hundred people is coming on Thursday, man. Only a couple of days left. It's gonna be crazy, bro. So we got Mr. Paris Lilly from Gamer Tag Radio joining us as our special guest. We're gonna have a nice conversation with him about you know his rise and all this other stuff. All these fanboys. You know, it's funny. Paris and I we t- we like talk all the time, right? And like him and I have been inundated by fanboys like crazy recently. So we're just sharing crazy screenshots and stuff. Man, you know, so it's gonna be fun talking to him. We're also gonna have Riku's son, one the only one, one of the founders of Throwdown. You know, gotta have him on there. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. For that episode, we're also going to be having a contest where we're going to give a game away. The questions will be pretty tough, so looking forward to uh, you know asking that. I got to figure out if we're going to do a separate video for that. We're going to do it on Throwdown. We'll figure all that out. And also, we're going to announce our biggest contest ever, people. Oh, man. You guys are not going to be ready for this shit. This is going to be nuts. Like I said, your only clue is we're taking it to the next level. You know, So get ready for that. And also... As uh, Carlos mentioned, uh, episode 300 of Throwdown Your Questions will be an AMA special. That means you can ask us whatever you want. So as of this episode, starting you know pretty much right now after you listen to it, start asking us questions. We're going to limit them to three questions per person. Usually two, we're going to do it three and ask us whatever you want. If you want to ask us some game stuff, that's cool. But try to think outside the box, you know, like some n- other questions, pop culture, life whatever you know astrophysics we don't care just go nuts be creative with it you know and for that episode we're gonna have our good friend andre tipton on to answer questions fun fact about andre he was the first big guest that we had on this iteration of throwdown so that'll be fun to celebrate 300 episodes of that show or this show i should say uh, with him so get ready for that man so uh, without further ado let's get into it man we're gonna start off with our boy mr tumeke from new zealand bruh so his first question is, <laughs> okay, with all your talk, he's talking about us throw down, with all your talk about no reason to get next-gen consoles at launch, in all honesty, how many of you know you're going to be getting one at, day, at, day, at launch? <laughs> um, Carlos, I know you're getting one. Yeah, I mean, that's... Are you getting I, both, I, though? Oh, hell no. <laughs> nah, I, don't mean, yeah. I, I don't mean to sound like a dick, but Uh-oh. I'm, I'm getting the PlayStation 5 just because they... Like I know what I'm getting, and I'm and I fix that you know that new hardware edge stuff. So that's the reason why I'm getting that. The play, the Xbox. I'm like, I got my my PC. I'm probably gonna. I mean, it's pretty beast right now, but I'm probably gonna upgrade it next year. So I'm just gonna play all my Xbox exclusive games on PC. Yeah, maybe that's until the end of time. Yeah. Um. Since Brett's not here, I was gonna. I wanted to reword the question to be, which one of you is not getting a place in five at launch? Because none of us is getting an Xbox. You know, let's just be real. Even Brian, I think, can get one. So it's t- Brian doesn't need one. He has a PC, you know. Oh, I thought you were talking about PlayStation. Yeah, well, well, actually, that's a good question, Brian. I know I already know you're not getting one at launch, but would you eventually get a PlayStation Five? Um, uh, yes, because again, the PS4 is just so damn loud. <laughs> then again, it's like a conditional thing. Like, 
on the condition that somehow the PS5 is quieter than the PS4, then yeah, probably so. Yeah, um, as for me, I, I keep saying I don't see myself getting one at launch if it's $500 and with these weak-ass games. But, like I said before, and again, one of the cool things about having a podcast is uh, when you record something, it's for posterity, it's forever, right? I said if the all-digital one is $399, $400, day one, without a doubt, you know? Um, but I definitely will be getting it within the launch window. I will be getting the console within the launch window for sure. Just not day one. I don't feel it's necessary. And I've stated the reasons before. Many of the games that I want to play are already going to be available either on PS4 or PC. No no, you know, reason to get that. And also, you know, I'm, I'll play Spider-Man. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to play it. But I'm just not that excited for it. You know, it's not it's like, OK, Miles Morales. That's cool. I'm not really a Miles Morales guy like that. You know, Peter Parker, that's my Spider-Man. You know what I'm saying? I'll get the game. I'm pretty sure it's going to be fantastic. I'm pretty sure it'll be spectacular and amazing, you know, but, you know, not not worth plunking down five hundred dollars at launch, you know, but I will be getting it, you know, within the launch window when Ratchet and Clank comes probably. I'm keeping it real right now. You know, the question is about being honest with yourselves. I'm being honest with myself, man. I want that motherfucking Ratchet and Clank. So I definitely will be getting that game, you know, with, with a PlayStation 5. The question is, will I spend $5 on it? That I have to question because my mm, Ratchet and Clank. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to wait to see. But if that thing's $400, PS5, day, day one, without a doubt, without a doubt. And as for Xbox, like Carlos, fuck do I need an Xbox for? I got a PC, you know, and I... Nobody actually. I don't know if anybody asks us about these PlayStation exclusives because people say now you don't need a PS Five. You know, <laughs> just get, get 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 your games up. He's like, bro, those it's games. Even, yeah. Oh my bad. It's, it's not even about the the PlayStation exclusives. Like, I think most of us in the panel, I think all of us actually believe in in, in generational exclusives. Yes. So that's just you know that's just facts, and that's why we we are gonna get the PS Five. Um, yeah. I, for me, I think there is gonna be a shortage. Of PlayStations, that's another factor of why I think I'm going to get one at launch, like day one. So, yeah, I I, I don't want to be someone that's going to try to hunt in for like PlayStations, like oh, does this best buy have it on Christmas or that kind of stuff? I don't want to I don't want to do that. I'm going to see the first day I get that email. If I get that email, Adam will probably let us know. You I'm know, gonna, I'm going to pre-order that. Adam already got the email um thing. Like, didn't you? Yeah. You got an email from Sony, You're, so he's good to go. The... It, it is so I, like well i guess i'll jump in it, it depends ahead, yeah. on uh, for me and and i said this last week i was off the whole grid of launch that i was like no until that call of duty call, call of duty. duty if call of duty launches the same time if that's a launch title not a launch window because i'm already going to be playing it to, to do the review and that's the other thing like you too I mean, we get a lot of games that are still available for current gen so it's like there's really no point at this point to just go and get one of those systems at launch eventually we'll get it but right now at launch what launch titles are going to be you know hot off the press that, that you have to get like you said that miles morales whatever who gives a shit that's, 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 that's not enough that's not enough that doesn't wow me you know we want that wow fact we want that oh and for me call of duty now here's the here's a little asterisk with that is that i don't know what it looks like with the, compared to our current gen that's what I want to see. I want to see if it's like, oh, all three tanks in Warzone on current gen, 10 tanks, you know, on next gen. Then you see real crazy war. That's what I'm looking to see. But we haven't seen that yet. Now, they have a, a big announcement for the multiplayer. I think that's this week, but this, this sometime the 7th or 8th, sometime in September. It's early September, first week or so. And I'm assuming that's when they do the multiplayer. They'll talk about if it's going to have co-op, which it should, because they all had the co-op for the Black Ops series, minus the, the Battle Royale. Black Ops 1, 2, 3, four-player co-op. That was always a big thing. So mm -hmm. that would be great. So um, if uh, when they announce that, hopefully they tell us the date. But then again, I think that we, we know the date, right? It's like November 15th or something like that. November 13th, uh, which is 13th? also the date that the place in 5 is rumored to they come think out. That's what I'm saying. There which leads go. me to so, believe the place in 5 is going to be coming out that day. See, now, <laughs> you if know? that happened, that will be great. But, and I also I already confirmed people like, oh, well, which one you don't? I already said digital all day. That's it. Just like all, all day, day digital. digital, friend of the show. You know, missed for a long time. Hopefully, things get better for him in rehab. Listen, but <laughs> all, all this, my bad, too much info. Listen, but uh, what I'm saying is, if we don't know if that's a date, and we do get to see some comparable compared to the current gen version, but man, 
that's that that would pull me in. That would definitely get me to like shit. I want to play this. Why not just to have it? Because I don't care about just having it. I want to have something on it worth playing that's gonna pull me and wow me. And if it does something spectacular for Call of Duty, then I want to be all in on it. Day one. So there you that's go, it. man. By the way, I called that too. I said if Call of Duty comes out with plays in five day one, guys that are like Adam are gonna buy it day one. So there you go. There's your proof. You know, you Call, Call of Duty has that pull, bro. It has it that does. pull. It's it it's like does. a it's like a gas giant. The, the gravity it, well is so powerful, it, it just pulls things in, man. There's certain there's certain games that do that. Call of Duty does that. FIFA does that. Um, most basketball NBA. Not FIFA on Switch though. No, no, that's a legacy. <laughs> that's a legacy. That's the bullshit. I see now. That's a whole other rant that can go because I don't get why they make a FIFA version. It's maybe EA that does this shit. They make a FIFA version for the Switch that's missing all these features. It's missing game yep. modes and all kinds of. It's the gimped version, but yet they still call it the FIFA 20. No, call this like just FIFA Legacy or FIFA Switch Edition. Don't call hmm. it that because you're missing all the shit from the, the the real one that's on the other on the current gens on the on the Xbox and PlayStation. So I just don't get that. I, it, and they get away with it, and they charge full price, and they get away with it. It's bullshit. It's a scam. It should be false advertising. Somebody should sue because they're like, all right, you said this is FIFA 20. Where is uh, the street ball? I see that uh, the street ball in the Xbox PlayStation version. I don't see any street ball on this one. Why? And it's char- you charging me the same price. It's bullshit. Tell oh, man. Um, lost my train of thought. But yeah, Call of Duty, man. That's gonna that's gonna yeah. pull people in. Oh, uh, but that's what it was. It was a uh, Pac Dan. He a uh, Piggy Dan. He goes, uh, gotta shoot something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, exactly. Gotta, gotta shoot, shoot something. something. You know? Gotta go pew, pew 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 in the face in the face. Yeah, <laughs> get that KD up. Uh, upper room AK says, "Don't do, don't do that to your boy Phil like that." Y'all getting all those accessories too? Uh, oh, you mean like the fucking headset and shit? Nah, man, we'll wait. Yeah, we know? got headsets. We, so, we got headsets. Oh, oh, what if our current headsets don't work? <laughs> oh, 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 I gotta blow my nose. You know, shit. Then my wallet's not gonna work for that order because oh. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing. No, I'm tired of these fucking people triple dipping us and be like, oh, you need this, you need that, you gotta get. I remember I got pissed when Xbox One came out and they had that little adapter shit that you needed. To plug in for your headset and stuff. Like, That's oh, right. Yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is some bullshit. Um, what are the accessories? If I remember, I'm just off the top of my head. We got the camera, right? Uh, we got the the chargeable stand for the controllers. We got the headset. Mm, the controller the, itself the controller obviously you know yeah, it, and it does um, come with a place in five people because people are like oh my god you know what if i want to use my controller use the ps controller that comes with the ps5 man what the fuck is wrong with you uh it doesn't look like we're gonna get a special racing wheel but they said all that stuff will carry over so if you already have a, a racing wheel or a fight stick then those will carry no, over VR headset though yeah so <laughs> No, oh, no VR yeah. heads. No VR heads. Yeah. All right, yeah, but no, yeah. no, I'm not buying any of those. Fuck it. I'm gonna buy another controller, and that's it. Like I always, here's the thing. It, th- again, it's a fucking weird deal with the Rona. We probably we should have already had a controller released. I remember I bought the yeah PS- they did it early. Yeah, yeah, the Dual Shock Four. I bought that shit months before the PlayStation Five dropped. I didn't even open. I just waited. You know. Um. So I'll definitely. So yeah, that'll be the only accessory I buy. I'm gonna buy another controller because got to buy another controller. You know. That's just how it so, is. I have a question. Um, what up? Are we are we gonna talk about Miles? Again later. Um, Why? What, what, do you, what do you want to say? You got you got beef with him? So no, um, hold on. No, uh, Meso. Well, again, we it's four of us tonight, man. So go ahead and beef shit up if you need to. But go ahead. What, what do you got to say about Miles? So I I got a I got a message from uh, Damien the other day. Damien on. Like, no, Damien, where you at, bro? <laughs> shout out to Damien. You know, um, he like we're. Like, I was so hyped about the Ratchet uh, reveal from uh, last week. And I'm like, oh, this game looks awesome. And then, I mean, obviously, the reason why he replied was sort of kind of like to hate on PlayStation. And, and he's like, so but what happened to Miles Morales? Why haven't they showed that? That's a launch game. And Ratchet is a launch window game. And I'm like, I, I just told him, I don't know. Why don't you ask them? Or, or something like that. But, I mean, where the hell is Miles Morales? Yo, I'm going to keep it real right now. Damien? It's a great question. It's a great question. Think about it like this, right? Yeah, Ratchet and Clank is not going to be coming out probably until late February, right? We saw a whole, like, what's a seven-minute demo of that shit, right? Beginning to end, right? 
Miles Morales is supposed to be a launch game coming out in November, right? Steve and Stewart. and let's be honest, let's be honest. What is Miles Morales? It's a PS4 game up jump to PS5, so it's ready. So why aren't we seeing any footage? Great question, Damien. Even I didn't think about that. Why haven't we seen footage of that fucking game? Hmm? It's crazy, man. I just don't understand why this is the flagship game. Yeah, this is what's going to launch your system. We haven't gotten. Like everything, we haven't gotten a price, we haven't gotten a date, we haven't gotten Miles Morales. That's the big game. Yeah. Why? I, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And think about it: like people are so hyped for this game, you know. And I, by the way, I need to, do need to clarify this. Is obviously I've been on Twitter, I've been like asking questions about this game, not that question which I should have asked, but I've been asking questions about this game, questioning it, you know. And people are like, "Oh, why you hate?" I'm like, "I'm not hating on nothing." And they're like, "Oh, you're gonna look real stupid when the game sells well." I'm like, "It's gonna sell fantastically, bro." Like I just because I question a game doesn't mean I don't think it's gonna sell well, you know. Like people are just so black and white about shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, yeah. this is gonna be the biggest selling game on PlayStation Five at launch. I guarantee you that. Why? Because it has Spider Man in the title, you know, and it's yeah. coming off the, the one of the biggest selling games on PlayStation. Of course, it's gonna fucking sell. I, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna say some crazy. I, I, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything that oh. crazy. <laughs> I was going to say something really crazy, like controversial, like, yo, it's going to have a bigger attach rate than Legend of Zelda. It's, no, it's not. But that attach rate is going to be high as fuck. Oh, yeah. I guarantee you that. Yeah, they need to play something. Yeah, they need to play it because there ain't nothing to play. That attach rate, yeah, that attach rate is going to be nuts. As a matter of fact, Carlos, I'm flipping it around right now. Excuse me? Let's have fun, man. Uh, what do you think the attach rate is going to be in terms of percentage? I'll go first. Oh, I'm going to say 80% of people who buy PlayStation at launch or PlayStation 5 at launch are going to buy this game. Damn. Well, at, at launch? At launch, at launch. Oh, Talking yeah, about okay. launch. Talking about launch. Not yeah. lifetime sales. Talking about launch, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, that, that doesn't sound. I'll go 75. All right, 75. 75. It's going to be super high. Yeah. Brian, what do you think the attach rate is going to be? I'm going to say 40. Ooh, 40. Oh, 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 low end. Well, okay. You guys think that like everyone that buys PlayStation is going to buy it for like this game? No, not everybody. Just eighty percent of the people. <laughs> That's a lot of everybody. Yeah. Well, what else are you gonna play on this fucking thing? You know. Um, Adam, get get ready. Call Duty. Oh, yeah. Call oh, Duty. Ooh, ooh. Right, right, right. That's a good point. Did, did yeah. everyone just forget that it exists I, now? Like I, I gave I, them this. I'll tell you this much, if they just announce Call of Duty and that's it, that's enough for me. And that's all I'll play on it. I'll just have my PS4 still to do all the other Mr. shit. Mr. Murdoch. Carry over. But yeah, definitely Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, oh, Brian, you're right. Because I, I literally just I literally uh, just finished saying Call of Duty is going to be coming out the same days. That's yeah. a good question. Yeah, Brian, Brian changed my yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah, damn it, I got to change my mind too. Again, Call of Duty just sells like hotcakes. People buy consoles for Call of Duty. Like, remember when... Like people announced that, hey, Xbox has like this when the PSN went down, right? Yeah. And then mm -hmm. these guys bought Xboxes just to play mm -hmm. Call of Duty. People yeah. will do that, and <laughs> hence why I think that most of the sales will come from guys that, that are just saying, hey, I need to buy Call of Duty on the new consoles. Boom, buy Call of Duty. Oh, maybe I'll look into Miles, like Miles Morales. Hmm. All right, Brett. Um, we just like threw in an extra question. What do you think the attach rate is going to be on? Uh, on Miles Morales, I originally said eighty percent because there's nothing to play. Then Brian Ryan, we Call of Duty is going to be coming out, so I'm like, oh shit, let's scale that back. So I'm going to say fifty percent now of people who buy PS5 at launch are going to buy Miles Morales. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're muted, bro. There you are. I said I'll go thirty. Thirty? Okay. Brian said forty. Okay. Yeah, I'll um, go forty-five. Yeah, I'm going to. Keep gonna, in mind, yeah. you're going to have to buy the same game that you already bought. For this to be a thing, what do you mean? Like they're not you're you're not just just because you have Spider Man on PS4 does not mean you can. Uh, oh, it is standalone, isn't it? Yeah, it's a standalone game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I might jump it up to to forty. Yeah. All right, and I'm sure they'll probably have a bundle, digital bundle that'll include the original game too. So like, yeah, oh, yeah that's a, that's a rumor right now. You know. Um, oh yeah, they're they're gonna shove it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Enhanced version for the PS5. Ooh. Yeah. Meet the next right. Skyrim. Yeah. All right. Uh, damn, I forgot what the original question was. Um. Oh yeah, Brett. Um, are you going to be getting a console at launch? You said, but you're going to get both of them, right? 
Uh, I'm thinking about getting both of them. I, I've been socking away money for a while now, and unless, you know, some big expensive thing happens, I, I should have money for both. Cool. All right, man. Let's move on to the next question. It's also from Tumeke. The question is, uh, this one's a little bit of a long one. Okay. Now that uh, Joe Staten has been brought in to help get Halo back on track, does this mean we will not be seeing Infinite for a while now? Also, do you think... Halo has passed its expiration date and needs to be retired. I feel it's going to struggle against a new generation of, sh of shooters. Longtime fans hate the addition of Sprint, LDS, etc. Younger gamers need all those and more. Seems like Xbox is damned if they do, damned if they don't. Uh, the last part of your question, we actually answered on Throwdown. We actually made a whole video of it. Throw it on clips. So you can check that out. But yeah, do you think um, Halo is going to take a long time to come out? I think it's going to come out earliest fall of next year. I was about to say, they'll have it for holiday next year. Yes. Yep, it ain't coming out no spring, no fucking way. Because think about it, they just brought in a guy to change the direction of the whole game. That's going to take a while, you know? And I and I think we're being optimistic saying, you know, holiday next year. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's that's on the short side. Like, it, it realistically, in the world we live in, it'll probably be the following spring. Yeah. It's crazy. What about the rest of you guys? Um, Carlos, you're the first one that said this shit ain't coming out for a while, too, man. Among us, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I didn't think it's gonna come out till fall of next year, and then I'm, I'm even dubious of that. Kind yeah, of I think it might be like Brett said, spring of 2022. You know, because you don't just get a new lead, and you know, I, I might be confusing it with something else. But didn't they say on the press release that they're just working out the kinks? Um, or like I don't know, that? man. Because now with this whole Joe Staten guy coming back, it's to, yeah, oh, know. you know, it, it infuriates me because. They said they blame this on the fucking Rona, but they somehow the Rona makes like has to, forces you to get another tech lead. For the, uh, <laughs> right? Like it's so crazy. We like, all we all know the Rona is a bullshit. Well, maybe the main person got sick, and then they need to get somebody to replace him. Like, he yeah. can't come to work, so they need somebody. Uh, like, nobody can come to work, bro. Adam, that's <laughs> the only time the law of they gotta have something does not apply. Yeah. They didn't have anything. They they didn't have a, a working game. They had they had Craig. They had Craig. That's all they had. It's crazy, man. I just don't get it. Like, like this game was supposed to release this year. They were supposed to release in like two months, <laughs> and and now they're getting a, a new lead designer. But no, don't worry, guys. <laughs> we're just working out the kinks here. So don't worry. We're just getting a new a, a new head chief here, a new head honcho on this game. But just because we're working out the kinks because of the Rona, you know. It's, Yo, man, th those are. I'm gonna have to quote Chris. Tea leaves are right there. The tea, yes, right, man. Um, I, upper, I know, right. yeah. At, at at very best, this game's gonna come out fall of 2021. At the very best. Yeah, fall of two, yeah 2021, but it could be spring of 2022. You know. Yeah, I think so. That those those two time frames look plausible. Yeah, um, but yeah, as for that other a part of the question, we. There's a whole throw down clips episode that it's either out or it's about to be out. But, you know, again, you can just watch episode three, um, 299 of Throwdown. We talked about how and we kind of somewhat agree that Halo is past its prime. It's not as relevant as it used to be because Call of Duty just took over, you know. And Call of Duty oh. just changed everything, you know. Mm -hmm. Remember back in the day, it was all about we got to make the Halo killer. Then Call of Duty came and killed Halo, <laughs> you know. And nothing has yet to ha to kill uh, Call of Duty, you know, as far as uh, first person shooters go. So there you have it, man. All right. Uh, moving on. The question I just uh, I'm going to toss in right now so I don't have to Chiron for it. Uh, Mr. Upper Room UK, do y'all think cross gen will kill Halo regardless? I'm not sure if I understand the question exactly. Like, what is he talking about? By the like, way, it's AK, not UK. AK, oh, I thought UK. Okay, my bad. Uh, I don't, was that Arizona, uh, Arkansas, or whatever? Or maybe it could Arkansas, be a gun, you know? Or it could be a gun. Yeah, it could be a gun. Um, it, 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 he's in the room. If you could explain the question a little bit more, or, you know, that's going to help and, us. And, and, your, and your name, too. Yeah, and yeah, what does the AK stand for, man? Yeah, um, and, and do do a deuce. Uh, we're going to get to your question soon uh, in a little bit, even though I think we've answered that one before. But we'll get to that in a while. Um, so yeah, Halo, you know, again, I think what happened with Halo is, you know, the 343, they knew what was going on with that game. 
they knew that shit wasn't ready. But the executives, the higher ups, they're like, nope, it's Halo. Get that shit out there. You know, people are going to love it. They love Halo. <laughs> and, you know, these guys are living in a box and shit, not realizing nobody cares anymore. You know, um, he says, do you think um, Halo be on Xbox One will kill it regardless? You mean like in terms of holding it back? We already said that's a that's a bad idea having games across all systems like that. You know, like Halo should be, you know, in my opinion, it should be purely a next gen game but microsoft already came out and confirmed that it's going to be on xbox one regardless even with all the changes coming you know um he says a ak is from his old clan name back in the 360 days all right mm. all right yep all right that answered that so uh we'll move on just uh, we can answer this one this one's quick uh do it deuce ass uh what's your take on the online gaming virtual uh events we actually answered that on a recent episode. Uh, we gave our thoughts on it. Um, I forgot what episode it was, but it was one of the more recent ones, and we all agreed. It's like, yeah, these things are... They're, it's frustrating because they you get like little bits of news, kind of insignificant news, sprinkled out throughout the entire summer as opposed to getting one week of compressed news. And I'm saying this as a guy who originally said we don't need E3 anymore. No, no, we do need fucking E3 as this summer of gaming has proven. <laughs> you know, it's like, Jesus, no. this Because again, you know, you read it on paper, right? You're like, oh shit, a whole summer worth of E3. That's what you're thinking in your head, right? Like, that's going to be crazy every fucking week. Bombs, 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 bombs. No, 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 no. It's all dispersed. It's all distilled, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it, it makes me wonder though after all this and hopefully next year we're in a different situation and if we can go back to normal in a way will a lot of these studios go back because the thing about it, they've saved a lot of money <laughs> right now doing this so yeah they had to tweak some things and then have everything be presented online and do that whole scheduling uh issue but when it comes financially they, they have to be saving a lot of money, especially when it comes to display setting up and moving things around and venue rentals and so all that. So I'm sure at the end of the day, when they look back and say, right, well, did this work out in the long run? And did we save money? Did we spend more money? And if the numbers add up, we may never see some of these companies go back to the traditional way of doing live events. They may just say, you know, fuck it, we'll just do this. This worked. It worked last year and it'll work this year. This is the new norm, sort of like what we see with movie theaters and with movies saying like Universal saying, you know what? Yeah, we'll eventually go back to theaters, but we're also going to go keep going with uh, VODs and we're going to do that three weeks after they launch in theaters. Oh, wow. So yeah, they said they're shortening that window. They, they used to wait three months. Three now months, they're yeah. like Three weeks Man, now. three months, that's crazy. I remember back in the day, bro, yeah, that, that video used to take a year, <laughs> you know? Well, we used to stay in theaters for almost a year. Yeah. That was the crazy shit. Now we got Rocky coming back. Get ready. He's doing a director's cut. Stallone announced it. Rocky Four. I remember waiting a whole year for Terminator Two to come out on tape, bro. I like oh, like yeah. going because again we didn't know when the fuck these things came out, you know. So I would go to the store like every week, like yo, it's Terminator well, Two and Terminator were, Two. Well, let's see how far back do you, do you remember when it was RKO? They used to sell those tapes. RKO, like, oh, bringing it back. They, they used to cost almost like a hundred dollars for a VHS tape. You pay a hundred bucks for a fucking movie. I'm like, what the hell? That's why it was it was like a godsend when mom and pop video rental shops popped up. Because I'm like, oh right, two dollars and I could rent this shit. I don't have to go and then eventually they would get the movies with years to get on hbo and then if you had a vcr you can record them yeah you know and that was that's the way right man this is why i worked at blockbuster yeah there you, you know, go i got i got to take home five video games a week that's awesome shout out to the throw nine crickets as always okay. all right man let's move on we are up to mr uh, frankie b let's see if i got this shit right um oh hoo, 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 hoo. this one set off a firestorm so i actually asked this on twitter and nobody could um give me an answer so maybe you throw it i can answer it how come this is from frankie b how come we haven't seen anything running on xbox series x uh didn't they do like the no, they were on pcs or... they were all on pcs what even the gears thing the gears things were they said we're all running on high-end pcs because with the Forza 2, people wanted to know. They said it was in-engine, but the engine is not in, in a Series X. It's like what they're developing. It was when they showed the first go-around of uh, gameplay and stuff. It was like, oh, this yeah, is the, the tech that's built, but it's not. Yeah, because at first I thought um, the games that they showed during the third-party thing were running on Series X, but turns out they actually weren't. 
they were just specced to be like yeah. Series X. Yeah. So I'm like, that's what they were okay. specs. So yeah, cool. like yeah. I don't know why we haven't seen any games running on the Xbox Series X, which is weird, you know. Oh, I think we've seen. I think I think we've seen, as Brian oh, we pointed out, we, we we've seen Xbox One games running on Xbox Series X, but not Series X games running on oh, Series X. If those even know, exist, we know it has exist because Digital Foundry received one of those Series X units. Remember no, no, I'm talking about Xbox one. Series X games, like games that were like. No, 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 no I know yeah. there's got to be games that work on it if the the hardware is put together. There's got to be a way to just put in a game, whether it's a. Know, digital version or physical disc just to run a test so i'm sure somewhere they're being played yeah uh upper room ak says haven and the medium he believes are running um on series x during gamescom by the way that's gamescom you guys didn't ask us about that what a fucking waste of time that was you know um but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why we haven't seen more games running on it. We saw we've seen plays say what you want well about plays and five. We've seen games running on this shit, you know. Very interesting. So what what do you guys think, man? I I, I don't know. Is I'm 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 part of the Twitter poll. I don't I don't know. Hmm. They haven't showed anything. I'm kind of surprised by this question. Because I, I I literally don't know because PlayStation, every time they, they always they always tout it. It's like oh, only like place running on a PlayStation. Ratchet and Clank, the demo, they they had that at the beginning. It's like running on a PlayStation Five. Even the Unreal uh, Tech uh, Five Tech demo did it, but yeah, X Series X. I don't know if there it could be possible. Curious to know if someone actually knows this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I I, I put the question out there and nobody said anything. I mean, they were like, no, 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 no. A couple of fucking memes and shit. Obviously, yes, Xbox. Um, but. Mm, I'm at a loss for words, man. It, it, it's just like, hey, how come we haven't seen any gameplay of Miles Morales yet, bruh? Very, very strange that we haven't seen that. But I don't want to delve into conspiracy theories because uh, we could come up with a bunch of those. Um, let me see. But you guys in the chat can speculate all you want. <laughs> uh, upper Roommate K says, the power must not be as impressive as they made us believe. Possible. Uh, do, who was that? Do the third. What's going on, brother? He goes, I thought Phil took one home. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you find that so funny. Yeah, that was funny. I just imagine Phil talking. Spencer with a fucking Xbox Series X under his arm running away and shit. <laughs> Can't play shit. But he didn't. <laughs> Can't play shit. Do you, remember, do you remember? It was on Twitter. Oh, see, he asked that. He asked us, was he playing it, on it? it was- but it was on Twitter. It was on Twitter where Uncle Phil wound up posting up that he had one at home. He said, "Yeah, I just got one home and playing it now. It's amazing." And What's he playing? Play. What's he playing? Yeah, I, I can't wait. I can't. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. He said, I can't wait for everyone else to get their hands on this. So he said he finally had his, he got his version home. So it's out there. Like, is he playing Hell Hellblade? Like, what the fuck's he playing on his shit? You know, <laughs> probably, probably early shit. Yeah, it's interesting, man. All right, we'll move on to the next question. This one is from Roman Ronin. First question. Ooh, all right. Um, In terms of games that have been around since the PS2, Xbox, GameCube generation, is Ratchet & Clank a top 10 franchise, a top five, or even a top three? And here's the reason he's asking this. Halo came out during the same generation, yet I never expected in this crazy year that is 2020 that a Ratchet and Clank game would be generate would be generating as much buzz going into a new console generation compared to one of Microsoft's legendary titles, uh, whether for good or bad. Ratchet and Clank games have been incredibly consistent, surpassing its PS2 brethren, uh, Jack and Sly Cooper. I agree there have been one or two low points, but I'm not saying the games have been ambitious or revolutionary as the gta zelda or metal gear series but ratchet and clank is absolutely one of sony's most consistent and reliable franchises uh he goes i just remember god of war also came out on ps2 that doesn't change what i laid out above you know what i like about this question is i didn't think about it i said yo you know ratchet and clank has always been there always been well received but it's never really blown up you know then they showed the the new footage on friday everybody went fucking nuts you know and then i thought about and then you know compared to you know halo i'm like oh shit Halo, huge franchise, change the industry, right? Look at how it's being received compared to Ratchet and Clank. Very interesting. I'm, I'm really glad you asked this question, Roman, because I'm like, oh, wow, that's how times have changed. You know, you got the the little guy down there just chilling in the cut. 
Now he's rising above. And then you got the big guy, the big dog, b- being brought down. You know. Yeah, but they both during the same time had bad movies. Or TV no. shows. Remember Halo had a bad one. Then the, the Ratchet and Clank movie. Was that was horrible. That. Yep. Go ahead, Brett. <laughs> oh. He's getting attacked by a dog. He's getting attacked by. He got to cut his mic off. Something. Yeah, I heard something going on. I was like, on the floor. What? Oh. All right, bro. You jump in when you can, man. Um, but yeah, that's all. Yo, that's crazy. Like Halo again. Halo was this huge fucking franchise. You couldn't get away from Halo. Halo three, top of the food chain. Nobody's fucking with Halo. Had to make Halo killers. All that. Yeah, but, you know. But you think about it. You're also talking about the 360 era. None of that happened during the Xbox One. Yeah, no, Halo you're right. It was Halo one and two. Of, yeah, but none of obviously, the titles that they yeah. released on this one. But let's be that. real though, Halo. I guess was this is gonna happen. Oh, oh go ahead, Brett. Go ahead, Ben. Dude, I mean, it's inevitable. It's I have yet to see a, a, a Halo is an is a first person shooter, and while I've seen them maintain, I've never seen them reinvent and or reinvigorate. Meanwhile, platformers, cutesy, cartoony, uh, main protagonists. Uh, available to all ages, it's begging to be reboot and put in the center spotlight. So eventually, just looking at the equation, you can tell the tail the skills are going to tip. I mean, if unless I'm wrong, like tell me a tell me a shooter that has reinvented itself as good or better than its original. I mean, the best I can think of is Gears, and that's maintained. I don't think it's necessarily gotten. Better. Um, well, you know, as we talked about the the game that actually killed the Halo franchise, Call of Duty, that reinvented all FPS games. You know, every F- FPS game is now in the mold of Call and of Duty. It, maintains, but do you it think, does maintain, yeah. Do you think Call of Duty will ever see something bigger than its heyday? Mm, it's been question. hitting the numbers, though. This that, war zone has been yeah, killing that's, it financially. They've been fucking... Yeah, that's the thing, it. Brad. It's like the heyday hasn't gone away yet, you know? Yeah, it's still there. I mean, they're talking about... They it's still the biggest selling game every single year consistently for okay, the last yes, 10 years. yes. Yes, outside of GTA, agree. outside of GTA, I, obviously. I would agree, but yeah. I would be curious to see like a, a kind of per capita breakdown in the, in the sense that um, how much has Fortnite taken out? Like it used to be nothing. Like Call of Duty reigned supreme. As well, the Fortnite was app- free, so who knows? I mean, so, it, it still, makes a like, lot of money, bro. It makes a lot of you know, money. I know. Yeah. But then when you got Call of Duty that is charging sixty and making all the money from the battle passes and all that stuff. I agree, but I'm saying. Call of Duty used to be the sig- not just the undisputed, but the only real behemoth. Like oh, you could you could play Battlefield, but it was Call of Duty. It was yeah. Call of Duty fucking all day I, long. I, I gotta now, say, it's a different now it's sharing, order, now it's sharing that, but it's sharing mm. that state. I don't think. I don't think so. No, I, I, agree, think no, I agree with Brett. Cool. I agree with Brett. Cool, um, for, Fortnite is a fucking monster right now, bro. It is. It is, but it's a different audience. It's it a is, different type yeah. of game. It's they're not not no, on but, that. But, but the thing, and Brett, correct me if I'm wrong here, but when it came to online shooting games. Call of Duty was the only one for years. Nobody was yeah, touching that's, that. That's a first person yeah. shooter. Yeah. No, no, we're talking about shooters in general right now. We're talking about shooters in general, you know? Yeah. Like you, that, you can't it's deny the type Fortnite. Of activity. There's plenty of it's, other it's, games then. I wouldn't put that. No, you can throw that in anything then. There's plenty of other games that jump into that. What else is to- hitting Fortnite levels right now, dude, besides Call Damn. of Duty? That other fucking game that on uh, the PC, the, the one for Steam. That we were talking about before, that has all those Dota and has all those crazy tournaments, or that uh, Overwatch. That Dota, no, no, none of those guys are Call of Duty big. Exactly. Yeah, they're, not, they're, not, they're not Call of Duty. Not on this. That's what it's I'm saying, like, man. Like no Fortnite either. It, Nobody I dude, know on Fortnite. They, dude, okay, hold on, hold on. If all right, anybody in the chat, do you play Fortnite and Call of Duty? Like, do you see the like, Adam? Both? Do you not see how Fortnite has just taken over everything? Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's over. No, because are you, you can kidding say, me right now? It, it, you got FIFA. FIFA takes a, a big chunk of a player suit. That doesn't compare to Call of Duty. That's a different realm. I consider Fortnite a different realm. You don't put that next to a Call of Duty. Or you can consider a different realm where you want. It's all gaming, and Fortnite is fucking huge, bro. Come on now. Yeah, but I don't see how this impacts Call of Duty in any way. It's obviously, no, you're, you're missing the Adam. point. You're missing the no, point. I, I do. I do see it though. I, you know. Right now, I think, you know, Call of Duty has its core set of fans that are diehards and are going to be diehards for a while. Fort, what, I, mean, uh, I mean, Call of Duty. Fortnite, what Fortnite is doing is it's captivating and it's cultivating a, a new generation of gaming uh, fans, of, of gamers. You know, a lot of these Fortnite people used to be casual gamers or non-gamers. They, they're, they're, you know, their friends are playing it. You know, all it's it's one of the most popular Games for, there you for go. kids. 
my, my nephews go. play it, you know, all of like, it's so many people play it and it's like part, it's a zeitgeist game. That's even what I'm more talking so about. Than, even more it's so than Call of Duty Fortnite, game. Fortnite is bigger Call than Call of Duty now. Dude, Adam, it's your whole point is Adam, 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 you, Adam. You said it was hitting into Call of Duty and it's not. It, no, it, we didn't it say it's hitting. No, no, no. Your, your, your point is you, you can't ask if somebody plays both as a, a, a way to try and judge your experiment. because I'm not asking somebody, if anybody plays both. You said it. You said that they were playing more Fortnite from Call of Duty. That they were no, he didn't, saying, he didn't say, he didn't that, say Fortnite that. Fortnite cut into Call of Duty's market share. Yes, it nah, did. It's nah, the free nah, fucking nah. shooter. That nah. Nah. It, <laughs> All right. So we're not going they're, going into casual. they're going into what he just said. It's the free, the people that just want to jump in a game that's free and they'll download it because it's free. They're I getting into that. Casual. They're no, getting he's not saying that. The activity game, saying. man. Who plays, who plays Call of Duty? And when you play Call of Duty, you play matches over and over and over again in a competitive mode in your free time. What does that sound like? Oh, that sounds like fucking Fortnite. I don't care that one is third like person a lot and of one games. is first person. It sounds like a lot of games. It, exactly. There are games. There are games that go intentionally for that time killing game. That game they want you to spend time with and kind of turn off your brain and just run six hours through the game. It's an activity game. I've talked about activity games yeah, before. So both games. Fortnite, both Fortnite, and Call of Duty are shooter activity games. The kind where you meet your friends online after school. Right, they do share some of the same market. A and, lot of games yeah. do, though. That's so general. Come on now. A lot of I games do. But none Another of them are as big as Fortnite, and that's that's my point. Yeah, Apex back in the game. day, wow. back Apex in the day, plays that shit. Yeah, dude. Oh, back in the day, it used to be Call of Duty on on pedestal one, two, and three. And, uh, gold, bronze, uh, gold, silver, bronze. It was Call of Duty, Call of Duty, and Call of Duty. That's right. It is not that way anymore. And yeah, it's now Call of Duty, Fortnite, Battlefield. Not old. Call of Duty, Fortnite. Nobody gave a fuck about those compared Nobody to Call of Duty. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. No, Adam, Adam. Oh, was, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. So you're telling me that Battlefield was on the same level as Call of Duty, and when it came to like player base and money generation, come on, bro, get out of here with that. They tried. That's what I'm saying. They, they tried, tried, but they failed that's the point no, dude but that's what Fortnite I'm is the only it's game that matches call of duty now yeah. or surpasses they can it, match they you know? can match it, but it's not taking the audience that's what i kept no, saying it's I'm not, not, no, it's not but i never got to the end of my point like it's not trying. taking the audience right now but Fortnite, like i said it's captivating and it's cultivating an audience, a younger audience right now where call of duty's audience is going to age out it's going to be it's going to be an old people game like halo was yeah, we'll say people always like guns this is america yeah, well, that's why Fortnite's doing so well. That's why Fortnite, <laughs> there you go, exactly. Yeah, people like people like people like, gun, people like guns and Michael Jackson dances. Yeah. Fortnite's got both. That's, that's it. That's you it. You still got Nike. You still got some Michael Jackson. Dances. Listen, just because we don't play Fortnite, we can't deny its uh, power, bro. It's fucking behind. No, I, 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 denied, I never denied the power. I just said that it's not the same audience. That's I it. That's freaking, all I said. I it's freaking hate it. and 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 get and 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 hear me with this. Oh, I freaking hate what Fortnite is doing in the industry. Because Fortnite is a a casual is a casuals you know it's a layman's game it's a you know with now let let Carlos finish then you go Brett Carlos finish it, up it doesn't move the industry forward it 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 does what it does it's a microtransaction based game and there is hardly any innovation technical wise or gameplay wise in the game. it just added the the create the create uh you know a barrier mode and. You know, kept and get resources, which you can find on a lot of other games, and it just did it on a simple package that looks like a cartoonish game. And they and they get advertisements from, you know, Travis Scott, Marvel, all of these companies, and that's how they get people. You know, they're all events, and and they're zeitgeist events, and it it crosses over the Venn diagram between popular culture and Fortnite is so fucking huge that they don't have to innovate in the game. Halo with Bungie when they were at the top of the game, they were innovating. They were innovating every iteration, whether it's multiplayer, online multiplayer, online co-op, you know, Forge mode, Firefight, even though that's a Horde mode uh, ripoff, but they still innovated on that. And 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 then 343 brought it to the ground. Um, but that's what they do. Even I mean, Call of Duty stays pretty much the same, but at least I can give them that they try really hard on those single player campaigns. They they. They do innovate in a lot of ways that way. I mean, it's, it's less so than all the other games, but Fortnite is just at, at the lowest common denominator in terms of innovation. They, they got this niche that they know people are st sticking to, that they're tied to, and 
they're going to run with it. And, and people, this is, you know, think about it like this. My my game, so you, you know. Do you think it's going to hurt them that they're not on iOS and Android and that whole thing? Uh, oh, that's a different question. That's, that's My bad. That, yeah. No, I, I mean, that, that that cuts away from their audience. If you're saying oh, this no, audience no. is hardcore and they're going to stick, they're going to have to find another way to stick to it. It's going to hurt them. I don't know if it's going to kill them um, at the end, but it's definitely, I mean, it doesn't help being on, on the biggest the biggest platform, one of the biggest platforms out there. Yeah, it's definitely going to hurt. Um, but at the end of the day, like you, you talked about how the COD people couldn't play uh, Call, Call of Duty on, on, on PSN because PSN was down. So they got an Xbox. When was that? These Fortnite people. We talked about that like 10, 20 minutes ago. Um, we yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Fortnite well, people. Don't that. That. Well, no, we talked about that. We talked about that. Rewind the tape. Rewind um, the tape. Rewind. Rewind. Yeah. So it, people, if Fortnite is this big of a game, people are gonna find a way to play Call it. Call of Duty, was dead. dude. Adam. Do you realize that the you, when you're talking about Call of Duty, you're talking about like the outlier? Call of Duty is not the king anymore. Fortnite is. It, I don't you, care who's king. I'm talking about audiences if they cross over or not. That's all. I we, he just confirmed it. He said the same thing. Call of Duty has its hardcore audience and people that like to play, and then obviously that's in the millions, and they're still there. Those people are still there. That's all I I agree with. That's it. That's all I said. Yeah, okay, I didn't shit on Fortnite. I said it's a different okay. audience. But you don't see how that has changed their market share. You don't see how that's different from back Everything the day. can change. Yeah, I'm sure some people, because of the younger audience that would normally go to a $60 game, now go to a free game. Uh, yeah, that it's just it's, all you have to do is click a few buttons on your phone. And, well, before you did. And then you download it. Now you got the game. That's, that's so, what, that was my point. But, but now you got Call of Duty, which also has this mobile game. I don't know the numbers, but that shit's also free. And it's doing the same type of thing. So who knows? In fact, let me look that up. What's up with the Call of Duty mobile game? All right, man. Let's move on, man. Uh, interesting conversation, though. Um, am I even ready for the next question? Fuck. Um, damn, I, oh, this one I wish Chris was here for. Um, but we'll do our best. Um, next question from Mr. Roman Ronan. Uh, hypothetically speaking, name one thing Nintendo can do this holiday season to capitalize on gamers' frustrations with the rollout of the next-gen consoles. Oh uh, yeah, one of the things that I've been hearing is that um, Nintendo is apparently not going to have any big games this fall. Like, th- th- I could be wrong, but that's what I'm hearing from Nintendo fans. They're frustrated with Nintendo too. Um, the thing is, you know, speaking about different audiences, you know, Nintendo guys are different than you know other guys. You know, like average gamers or hardcore gamers. So it's 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 a the blue ocean. So I don't think what Nintendo does or what the other systems do affects Nintendo and vice versa. So I don't think they need to do anything. You know. Uh, they're kind of they're kind of just coasting right now if you think about it you know they they're, they're selling what like 60 million consoles already all their games are still doing hot you know so nintendo doesn't actually need to do anything um for this holiday season maybe they'll whip out something who the hell knows i don't really keep up with nintendo like that to know uh but i i do know that apparently they're not going to have anything this fall which is really interesting but you know they didn't have anything last fall either and you know to still blow up and as a matter of fact think about this didn't they have one direct where they literally just announced a game and it fucking dropped that day or something like that or the week afterwards and it went fucking i think it was a paper mario game or something you know so maybe maybe they'll do something like that you know but you know as this podcast has taught me best not for me not to predict anything nintendo because i'll be wrong every single time i don't understand that fucking audience i don't understand the the user base i don't understand their business practices so whatever, you know, um, what about the rest of you guys? Do you think Nintendo's going to uh, pull out something to, you know, uh, offset the, the, the consoles coming out this fall? Come on, I guys. I <laughs> no, I'm really because I, yeah. I just looked up. I saw the 250 million uh, downloads for that Call of Duty free mobile game. That thing. But when it comes to Nintendo, they got to have something. Um, and there's, hey, there we go. There we go. Uh, 56 no, minutes and 29 it, seconds. It, it has to. They, they, it'll probably be something cheesy, like a remake or something, or maybe the, the one game that we all thought was going to sh- show up and never did. And it's that Metroid, that Metroid <laughs> remastered <laughs> shit that they did on a 3DS. Remember? Well, I'd, be nice. like, oh, I'd be nice. I'd be nice. I'd be nice. Like, oh, eventually that'll come. That'll eventually come. They, that was they like never said that. Ago. They never they said that. Shit. They never said no, that. They didn't. People said yeah. that. I'm saying people said yeah, that. means that's not going to happen. This Motherfucker's been talking about how GTA 5 is coming up. No, 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 that's different. GTA wasn't there before. That was on 3DS. 
we're talking about this Metro game that was already on 3DS, that me- that the Metroid Returns that they yeah. did, and they're like, oh, well, that's gonna come over. We got Puyo Puyo did it, and Puyo Puyo came over. So yeah, they, they're just gonna give a time delay. No time delay. It's been like what two years now. That shit ain't ever coming. So I'm I'm assuming it's gonna be something cheesy like that because that's something that they could definitely just port over. Don't tell me it's, it's gonna take a fucking full year to remaster and figure out how to get that shit to work from the 3ds on the switch yeah. all they all they need to do is is release that that nintendo uh anniversary edition where they're like talking about re-releasing um sunshine and all that sunshine 64 yeah, and that's all. right uh piggy they, dan just said that in the chat he's like they could release the remasters of the mario games you know what that would actually probably be enough for nintendo fans oh yeah that'd definitely. be enough Dude, Nintendo fans don't need that much. Like, I, I, I genuinely and honestly don't understand how this is a foreign concept, to people. Especially you, Tony. Because yes. you, you give that same grace to Sony that you think is so weird that people give to Nintendo. No, but here, let me explain myself, though. I don't get those games. That's the thing. I understand the, the, the loyalty to these franchises. I get it. I just don't like those franchises. So I, that's no, why I don't get it. Understand? It, it's kind of the antithesis of of what you play games for. Like you play games for stories, you play games for completionists. You're you're very detail oriented. Nintendo games are pretty much activities. They're just yes. always they're, their main idea is to be fun. Every moment you should be playing it should be fun. Not that there's a, a way to sacrifice something. Oh, something happened. <laughs> yeah, the cat. <laughs> Something happened with his. Yo, by the way, for you guys who were listening, Brett just had to run across his room and throw his cat off of something. <laughs> oh, I'm fucking knock it over, ceramic dragon! Just get the fuck out of here, <laughs> motherfucker! Get the whip, get the See, that's why I had to close my door. I got to close the door because the cat would be doing the same shit. Yeah, I close the door. <laughs> oh, you see, hey, listen, when you watch Throwdown Live, man, you see some crazy shit. I think Manny's you know? cat is the only one that just stands and like sits in the. the yeah, the Manny's background. cat is chilling. You know, he just watches. It, it sees what he's doing. He's like, hmm. He's just looking at that screen. What the fuck? What's wrong with him? <laughs> it's just, it, like, think about it in the cat's eyes. Man, he's doing what he's always doing. He's just talking during it, you know. Um, no, but no, you're, you're right, but So I understand the attachment to franchises. I just don't understand the attachment to those franchises. But like you said, they're not Tony games, you know. Um, I, I like games that actually, you know, look like they're so, for adults, you know. So, so here's a question with that. So to Carlos, because you were talking about people aging out with uh, Call of Duty. Now these Nintendo titles are much older. Than Call of Duty. Or, do again, Nintendo Call fans are, are different. Nintendo. You, but I think they're, they're different, but they're going to die. They're all going to die. <laughs> so, unless these guys, these parents, it's true. That's just the way it is. They're going to fucking croak. And they're all getting into that. At this point, they're my age group of when that launched. We were there when it launched. The Nintendo first go around 84, 85. So, we're in our 40s. So, eventually, when we phase out, if, we're, if it's our generation is not passing that knowledge down to the younger ones, then they're all going to just say, fuck that. We're going to stick with Fortnite and the games that we've been playing, and we're not going to play your damn Kirby Kirby bullshit and Fat Plumber Guy. What's up with the Fat Plumber Guy? You know what? That is very socially insensitive right now, and I'm not buying into that shit. They, they're going to have a whole different take on Mario and all these games. So do you think that's going to happen? Do you think that's going to phase out? The thing is, I you know, Carl, sorry to cut you off, but I'm like, yo, Nintendo fans are like, at least from my, what I see, yeah, there are guys like our age, but most of the Nintendo fans I see are like in their 20s and shit, you know, um, early 30s. So, you know, the next, they, 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 they keep, bringing keep they keep bringing in new audiences every generation so they're doing pretty well right now and again and again let's just be real here because their characters are iconic that's why I, you know? iconic if they're being passed around iconic because of someone that's telling them they're not they don't have a tv show they don't have you know constant toys coming out shit that's always in your face uh, then it's different but for example my kid my kid is in that early stage she's you know eight years old she hangs out with her little friends they do play games they're into video games but the games they're playing or that uh, the Minecraft? What's that other one that I told you about? That that box shit that oh, you know about Roblox. it? Oh, Roblox. 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 Yeah. These are the games that they're living on. And th- I was like, oh, what about Mario? I've tried them. I mean, they have a th- 3DS. Yeah. She doesn't play any shit. She'll play Cooking Mama and other things on it. But the Mario games and the Luigi and all this stuff, that's... Whew, no, nah, not so, interested. But that's your daughter, though, you know? That's her, yeah. that's her group of friends also because I'm yeah. like, your friends are playing games, too. Well, yeah, yeah. What yeah. are they playing? Are they playing this new Mario game? Yeah. Well, I mean, stuff? maybe you can make a case for maybe that generation specifically may not care. But like, I'm, you know, again, just, you know, from my end, I know that's anecdotal to 
you know, 20 year olds, even late teenagers, they still play these Nintendo games just based off of the memories they remember when they were kids, you know? That's hard. That's us. I could have a teenager. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It's still my generation, our generation passing in over. Now it's up to that generation to try to That's spread right. It. Yeah, yeah. The teenagers and all that. Because they're already going to move on to, like you said, Fortnite and all those other bullshit that these kids are going to be playing that. Yeah, no. You, by the way, I'm gonna take it off the rails a little bit because uh, we still got a full time. Adam, you know <laughs> that hit me like a truck, man. Like four years ago, man. Like when I realized how old I was. Let me explain, right? So four years ago, yeah, three or four years ago, um, my niece stayed with me, right? She was like, uh, she was like 14 at the time, right? And I would go out with her, and people were like, yo, Tony, what the fuck? When you when did when did you have a daughter? You know? And in my mind, I'm like, I'm too young to have a daughter. What are they saying? And then I thought about it. I go, Tony, no, 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 no. I was 36 and I'm like, Tony, not only were you old, were you old enough to have a daughter, but you could have had her the right way. You know, you finished college and shit. You, you got a job respond like, fuck, <laughs> you know, because in my head, I'm fucking 20, you know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and Adam, I know you think the same way to yourself, the same motherfucker in your head, that's you know, okay, fuck you what the fuck? I just showed you, finished telling you I bought a bunch of fucking yes. figures on eBay. I'm a fucking loser with my kid. Yeah. And I, Shit, and I pass it along. That's how I that get That shit was hilarious. I, I'm walking around funny. with her, like, "Yo, Tony, when you have a daughter, bro?" Because she's my sister's daughter. She looks like me, you know. I'm like, "Like daughter, I'm too fucking young to have a kid." I'm like, "Oh wait, no, I'm not." Because my sister's younger than me, and she had her, <laughs> you know. Oh man. Anyway, that's an outside question. And then, but speaking of my generation, though, bringing it all back together, you know, I, I think it is, you know. Nintendo is a generational thing. Keeps going and going. It's kind of like Batman, Superman. Those motherfuckers have been around for eighty years, but they yeah, keep going. They, New they, generations, they, 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 you know. They, 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 you see, they throw it in your face constantly. We got the comics, we got the movies, we got the games. You know, especially with the movies and the cartoons. You got the constant cartoon reminder. Nintendo needs to jump in on all that, and we heard they are right, aren't they? Doing oh yeah, I mean, think about it. They, yeah, they release a, a Pokemon movie. Uh, they're going to make a new Mario movie finally. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. The Mario yeah, so, that's what Nintendo. I'm I'm not, you know, again, Nintendo has. Those characters the, are so iconic; they're not going to go anywhere. You know, what's the the theme park? They're making like a Mario theme park. Yeah, theme Japan park. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who, who can't read that shit? Otaku man, what's going on, brother? We were gonna have. By the way, again, we're gonna have Mr. Andre Tipton on episode three hundred. Throw in your questions. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, do the third. I can't. I'm gonna deny that. I can't put that shit on air, bro. <laughs> oh man, what the hell were we even talking about? I forgot the question. All right. Uh, Nintendo. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, Nintendo. The, the Nintendo, Nintendo the fall. Yeah. And I was like, they have to have something. They're, they're, they're always going to pull some. something out of it. Yeah, they'll, oh, have, some. they'll, they'll have, have some. Or, or they'll be cheesy. And then they'll be like, you know what? We'll, we'll listen to what people want for the for that service that they call a service. That PS, what's it, what do they even call it? Nintendo Online Service. Yeah. They have a name for it. Though. It's called some. Anyway, they have to bring something else out, like the N64 support or some GameCube games. Do something, because right now all we have is Nintendo and Super NES. I'm sure the Switch can handle more than that shit. You could definitely pour it over some GameCube game. Cut the bullshit. Give us something good. Yeah, man. All right. Oh shit. Hold on, Piggy Dan, because he's a he's our big Nintendo fan here. So let's see what he has to say. He goes, one major point that Nintendo fans are very upset about, me included, is the lack of substantial firmware UI improvements. The oh. e -sh yeah, he says the eShop has issues. We still lack themes and folders, gameplay yeah. invites, a feature that was added to the Switch via an update but was barely used. I think we talked well, about that before, too. I'm going to ask him a question if he remembers. Because so when I had a 3DS at launch and, and continue to this day, I use it. But it took a long time. If he can remember this, it took at least a few years before we actually got those custom themes on a 3DS with the background music and all that stuff, right? Because I remember it was just colors for a while. Then they started doing actual artwork, and you could have full artwork and custom themes and buttons and stuff. It took a while for that. But I, I know it was a few years. I, he says it took a few know. years. He said like three or, yeah. four, three or you so. See, there you go. So I wonder if that's what they're doing, if they're going to wait that damn long, and then eventually we'll get that on the Switch because we know it can handle it. Why not just do it? Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's move on, man. Next up, we got Mr. Johnny W. Uppercut. He goes, what's going on, Lords of the Throwdown? I, I like that name, man. The standard bearers of Throwdown. All right, uh, his question is, is Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad proof of AT&T slash WB's desperation to get constant cash to pay off some of their debt? <laughs> proof Man. is I'm selling direct TV. That's proof. They, they're broke. They need to make some money, so. 
Um, is he trying to imply these games are desperate gambles or something? Because the Suicide again, Rock City was going to make another DC game. We already knew yeah. that. Um, but the Gotham Knights one that kind of smells a little funny, you know, like that they're trying. How, how so? Uh, it feels like they're trying to, you know, cash in on what Avengers is trying to do. It's like we're going to make a. Um, like a brawler game, you know, br looter brawler game. I don't know what the name maybe, you know, looter shooter, the, the brawling version of a looter shooter. We're just trying to do that with superheroes. So that's why it smells a little iffy to me. Microtransaction heavy, season passes, that type of shit, you know? So that's why. Can't say that, yeah. Didn't they can't answer that there's like no microtransactions in that? Oh, did they say that? Yeah, they came out like, with like this whole thing saying that, oh yeah, don't worry, it's not like a looter shooter type game. It's just like a co-op game like it's like you can still play the whole thing is like oh wow player. i didn't know that again i just saw the video i'm like okay there's another one of these fucking looter shooter games or looter brawler games hero looters i don't know whatever fuck you want to call. okay that's good to know that's good to know um but yeah, i don't know there's something about that game just rubs me the wrong way man you know i'm actually watching the trailer again now because i saw half yeah. of it i was like i don't think i've ever finished it yeah yeah you're not missing much you know um but i don't know if it's like a desperation play uh by at&t you know at&t is a terrible fucking company man i can't stand i remember they made really bad decisions fucking i remember i was on at&t's plan mobile plan for like less than a week i couldn't get reception in my own room you know like what kind of bullshit is it and the price was well, mad high too yeah, on top of that it's a that's a cell tower issue but remember when they had singular and that was a whole big deal and yeah. then they had to fucking put that down I remember that shit. You know, um, anybody else want to jump in on this? Uh, again, speculation. We don't. We don't really fucking know. I'm pretty yeah. sure Chris. Chris will have something to say, but whatever. Uh, go ahead, Carlos. No, I, I, I'm. I'm with you, man. I'm not even looking that too, too much forward to these games. Yeah. Well, here's the other comment. I'm trying to figure. Maybe you guys can answer. This It's all related. Is the DC Network dead? Is that it? Because I'm seeing that it's on HBO Max and it's also on regular TV. Some of these shows at Harley Quinn. So is they it dead then? What are they, they doing? No, they haven't ported everything yet. There's still some stuff on DC Universe, I think it's called. Yeah, um, DC Universe. Uh, but it's uh, still, it's like, what, five, six bucks? I don't even know. Maybe yeah, it's Yeah, it's, it's still a subscription service. Yeah. I, think in, I think what they're going to do is transition it to HBO Max, but currently there there are stuff on, on, uh, on DC Universe that or is exclusive to that platform. Mm. So, the, but it, it's phasing out pretty much, right? It's not growing. It looks like it sounds yeah, like it's phasing out. I mean, I, I'm, it's, it's not definitive, but I think that's what they're going to do. Because HBO Max is going to be the hub for everything. Everything, WB, everything, um, mm -hmm. whatever the hell, the else they own. Spectrum. All right. All right, man. Next question. Also from Johnny W. Uppercuts. All right. Do you guys know any developers who could make a great next generation supernatural game? He goes, for me, Black Myth Wukong has potential, but I already know it is not coming out anytime soon. Black Myth Wukong is not a supernatural game per se. It's like a God of War type of game or whatever. It's, um, yeah, it's weird. It's like a fantasy mixed with like old uh, historical fantasy game. Yeah, because it's based off of the um, the Monkey King um, story, Legend of oh, um, Journey to the West. It? The Kingdom, the one that, remember that movie? What was it? Jet Li and Jackie Chan. Remember they did one like that? With Something like King? that, yeah. For, for, it's, for it's a story, yeah, the story's been adapted a million times. Um, that um, game, um, what's the name of it? Black, I can't, I can't look at the name, Black, whatever, Wukong. Um, I saw everybody losing their minds, including Manny. Manny was like, oh, shit, look at that. You know, even Torrance, you know, our boy Torrance went so far as to say that's the first next gen looking game he saw. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I... well, he's not exactly wrong. I mean, again, the Epic game thing was a was a demo of whatever the hell that was. It yeah. was effectively something less than deep down. So I guess <laughs> Torrance is right in that aspect. You know, it is the first it's next gen game we we have actually seen. Yeah. So Brian, Brian's, uh, they gotta have something as a deep down reference. It's all. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. The game looks cool, but you know, but it, it's a personal Ooh. thing. I, I don't, I don't really care about Chinese mythology. Ooh. You know, what's up, Brian? What? Why are you hating, Tony? I'm not hating. Why, you hating? why he said it doesn't look interesting? I'm like, whatever. Why are you hating, Tony? It looks, it looks really good. 
Like mm. aesthetically, it looks really, really good. I will say this the fur on that wolf looked very good. That was very oh, yeah. impressive looking fur. Kind of remind me a little bit of on a Nokia. Yo, Br know. Brian, remind me off here. I'm going to tell you the real reason. I'm like, I don't know about that game, but I can't say. Oh, yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, we know. You, know the, you, don't have to, you don't have to tell us in the post. I don't, right? I don't want to support if you know what I mean, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll play it. But mm. uh, Something to say, but I, I really cannot say that on air. Yeah, I, I, listen, all I'm saying is I'm, I'll stop it for a I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll <laughs> stop. <laughs> All right, next question. Oh, the post shows will be great. Adam, <laughs> where are your pets? What the fuck? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Next question, we didn't even answer this one. What the fuck? Damn, Adam, Adam's a supernatural game right now. Look at this dude, yeah, man. Um, here's the thing. I'm gonna let you guys answer because I'll be honest. I don't play supernatural games. I don't care about that sort oh, of stuff. Oh yeah, you do. And I got a neat. I got the easiest one. Remedy. Oh, Remedy. Is that yeah. a? Oh yeah, that is a supernatural game, isn't it? Yeah. Alan Wake, those are all Super I didn't play Alan yeah. Wake, um, so Control's the only one then. Quantum Break. Quantum is that super, break. Yeah, that is Super. Yeah, Here's that the, is. Let's define Supernatural, because to me, Supernatural is Ghost, you know? Oh, yeah. there's more than that. There's more than it's that. Ghost, there's, it's... Okay. You know, it's spirits, it's Ouija boards and all that shit. Yeah, it gets to go. Yeah, it is Ghost, then. <laughs> spirit. <laughs> God, I don't know why, don't know why but I expected in Adam fashion he's going to say, you know... You know, spirits, Ouija spirits, boards, Ouija boards phantoms. Old, old you know, <laughs> um, be, beyond two souls, that's another supernatural game. Um, yeah. But we're trying to name developers that can make a good Jay next gen one. Again, I'll you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really, Dance, yeah. You guys need to go over the Epic Epic Game Store, and if it's worth downloading, I'm hearing questionable things about the store. And I just got the new computer, and I can definitely get into PC gaming. More desirable exclusives being on the Epic Game Store only on PC. Like Rocket League okay. very soon would force me to eventually install the Epic app. What's going I on was, now? I'm on Epic Store right now. Right oh. now, because uh, I had to get my free games. Every Thursday, they release free games. And this one now is Siege. A to uh, that's a Tom Clancy game. And Hitman. And they, they, every week it's it's free, so just sign up and right. just download it. Whether you want to use Resident it, Evil so. is not supernatural; those are biological based zombies. They're more science fiction. It's, than it's a sci-fi game, really. You know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, which developers do you think can make really cool um supernatural games for next gen? You actually don't get that many supernatural games. No, we so don't. It's hard to say. Fuck it, um, Kojima. Just, <laughs> just give it to him. <laughs> sure. Just, Everything hey, yeah. always okay. Everything always boils down to two things: Silent Hills and Batman versus Superman. Now, where you start off with, you always end up in one of those two places. So yeah, give it to Kojima, make Silent Hills. I can't argue with that. <laughs> well, I got a lot of hate with my tweet about Batman versus Superman the other day, bro. <laughs> yeah, from me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, the funny thing is, I said um, actually because I I did two tweets about it because you know. The whole uh, Snyder cut's been on my mind, so I said um, I can't hold it anymore. I got to speak my truth. I'm gonna probably lose followers, but I got to speak my truth. Batman vs Superman is a terrible film. I gained like 50 followers. Mm. <laughs> They're like, "No, you're right, man. Game, this movie's trash, bro." Right? Oh man! All right, so yeah, supernatural games are very difficult because they don't even really make a lot of them now. You know? Yeah, I mean, Remedy, Kojima, those are good picks. I yeah. think. Oh, before I forget. I should say spooky games. Speak. Japanese yeah. game. Japanese make a lot of supernatural games, you know? Yeah, yeah. Scary yeah. shit. I mean, even, even something like Yakuza has supernatural yeah. aspects. Some of those mini games. Mini, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Brian on this one. Koji. A lot of the scary movies are like that, too. Oh, the yeah. Bright, the Ring. Yeah. Ringo. Oh, there's tons of those. Yeah, movies. oh, Piggy, and that's been my thing with Epic Games or since they won. Don't get me wrong, I still get the games, and I'm like, what's the catch? <laughs> there's gonna be a catch eventually. All these free games, what's the catch here, bruh? The catch is they just want subs. That's yeah. the catch. You have to sign up. You have to sign up, and that's an email address. So fuck. Nah, it. I feel like oh. one day we get a knock on the door, like yo, Tony, man, about the, all those free games you downloaded from us. Oh, Time shit. to pay. Look, Speaking of supernatural, you're gonna show me a door. They're gonna show up with pineapple him? pizza, you know. Tim Sweeney's gonna show up with a pineapple pizza. <laughs> oh god. He's gonna he's gonna force you to sign a petition to get their freaking app on the on the yeah. iOS. For, yeah. Man, for some, you yeah. see the dev units are gone too now from there. Yeah. 
for some reason, Todd Howard's behind him. It's like, what's he doing here, man? Why is your hair so impeccable? Right? Like look at that hair, man. Shit, what you use on it, man? Let me, yo, can I touch it? Can I touch it? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. We're not going to get anywhere with this question. Let's move on. All right. Uh, Black Metal Gamer. All right. So this is one of his extra questions, but I made it a main question because uh, this one is more timely. All right. Which PlayStation games could you see coming to PC next? I have a theory about this, right? Because obviously PlayStation is going to be putting out their games on PC. They came out with a statement where we can say, yeah, that's part of our business plan. We're going to be doing this. I think what you're going to see is because people are already going, oh, day and date. It's going to be coming to day and date. They're not doing that. What I think you're going to be seeing a lot of for the first few years of the PlayStation 5, a lot of PS4 ports coming to PC. You're going to see a ton of those. It's going to be a very long time until we get a PS5 game on PC, and that ain't going to be day and date. You know, there's going to be outliers, obviously. Like, Death Stranding came out six months after it came out on, you know, uh, on PS4. But then I, I think Horizon Zero Dawn is going to be more indicative of what we're going to see three or four years after the fact, you know. Hopefully, we'll get better quality games because I hear Horizon Zero Dawn on PC is janky as fuck, you know. Um but take that as how you will. But yeah, uh, PS4 games are going to be the main thing that are going to be dropping on PC within the next coming years. What do you guys have to say? Last of Us 2. Oh, that'll come. That's it. That's that's what I'm thinking. It'll probably be just because it's still relevant. Yeah, they'll probably go through the back catalog and bring those over. But if they want to make some quick money, I'm like, oh, you know, that uh, exclusive we had just like last year. So did you, did you can play it now. There you go I on your PC. I think even before that, I think Ghost of Tsushima would be. You think Ghost of Tsushima? Really? Yeah, I think I think I, mean, they'll, I think they'll bring Uncharted first. To be honest, start with those because they're going to go with old games, man. They're not going to go anything recent. I mean, if people want to play those, they could already play those through the the PS on P- Now on PC. Yeah, Yo, but it's I was not about, the same. I was, about, yeah. I was about to mention PS Now. It's like imagine yeah. people. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I have buddies that played PS uh, that only have PS, uh, yeah. PCs, and that's how they play those exclusives that are on PS Now. Yeah. They play but, through that. PC. But Sony has has been putting their games on Steam, you know? Uh what's it called? Uh Horizon Zero Dawn's on Steam. Yeah. And so I'm like I just find I would find it really funny and ironic if 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 they ever do <laughs> day and date for these exclusive titles in on PC and they don't have them available for PS now. <laughs> oh shit. That would be funny. That would be pretty funny, you know. Um and I'm being very um Specific when I say PS4 games, PS3 games ain't coming to PC. <laughs> you know, though they can't even get them on PS4. You think they get them on PC? Get out of here with that. That'd well, be something about, though. Uh, what about it with the uh, re- oh, no. Damn it! <laughs> call shit about steal my jokes. About steal my goddamn jokes. Oh man! I about to say that they're going to port the remastering engine to PC. Yes. I mean, you may... <laughs> oh, and solo with the new driver. You know, just install a new driver and you're good. Scalability, baby. By the way, I find I find that whole thing against PC gaming so f- ridiculous. People go, "Oh, we got to install these drivers." You just hit update and you're done. That's all it takes. That's not for all games. That's not for all. That's for, for GeForce, baby. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, you know Way case better. Case in point. Case in point. Remember, I had that issue with Street Fighter Five, and then I looked up online. That was a known issue for almost every Nvidia card. Damn. So that was a that's what I'm saying. There are some situations, yeah. and I did the GeForce now, and I did all the other shit, and it, the GeForce experience. I mean, did all the, the shit GeForce drivers did yeah. nothing, and still, and it was like eventually I had to go into form. I had to copy some configs, dump that into Man. the game itself, just for that game to work. It wasn't a problem with the video card; it was something with the way that game was ported, and they never fixed the shit. Yeah, well, that's an outlier. Most of the time, you just hit update, and you're and good Batman, to go. And, and then the Batman game. Dark oh, Knight. that was Remember all that. fucked up. Uh, was Arkham, they had to Arkham that, Knight. Yeah. Yeah. They had to pull that shit for a whole year. So they, they, yeah. shit happens. Shit and, yeah, there's a, and there's outliers. Put, there's and, outliers. And, and they name titles too. And that can put a bad taste in people's mouths. Because they don't have that happening on console. You don't have Street Fighter oh, no, yeah, saying, oh, shit, this shit ain't working. Oh, what? Dark Knight's not working anymore. I guess it can never play it on my PlayStation. No, that, no. That yeah, never no, you're right about that. Yeah, no, their problem with Street Fighter yeah. 5, they didn't have any content in the beginning. Yeah, that Did was we it. just forget how janky No Man's Sky was on launch? Yeah, that was true. <laughs> it's like oh, no, we didn't play that shit. I didn't play it. I don't. Yeah, you didn't play it, but well, I did. Also, it quite was janky. Um, yeah, quite a lot of other other people also didn't play it because it was so janky. Oh, I powered through that shit even before the patches, Brian. 
60 well hours. Done, Tony. Yeah, yes. hoping it would get better. It never did. It never did, Brian. Never did. <laughs> did you find your friend's planet? No. Remember they said you could do Oh, you didn't do that? No, I don't think they had friends planning. No, they did bullshit. They said that you could. Remember, they were like, "Oh yeah, you can visit your friends." They, yeah, they yeah, said they, a they, lot they of things. They didn't have that at first. They put that in eventually, but they did not have that at yeah, first. Not at first. That was they thing. said it was multiplayer. It was not multiplayer. They said you could do all, you know, build all kinds of stuff. You could not build it. Like you, you, they fulfilled like almost zero of their promises. It eventually turned into what I understand is a really cool game. Yeah, That's all the, the things. Part. Yeah, unfortunately, if they, if they launched that game today, it would fucking kill it. Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree. I agree. Um, but yeah, you know, all the things they promised eventually came. But you guys know my stance. If you don't get that shit right at launch, I don't give a fuck. You know, you lost me. You only get one chance with me. All right, um, moving on to the next question for Mister Black Metal Gamer: uh, Which games with cliffhanger endings angered you the most? Or what about games that ended on a cliffhanger and never got a sequel? Uh, he says he's mad about God. Of, he's mad that the new God Award didn't address how um, the you know the ending of Part Three. Um, anyway, so yeah, what games had cliffhanger endings? And you're like, what the fuck? I got, I got the low hanging fruit. Oh, we just I mean we did it recently and I I had to relive it. Is that Halo Two, man? Oh, Halo Two. That's right, man. Finish the fight. Got to finish. It. It's a, it's a freaking cliffhanger so popular. Tony even knew about it. That's it. He even knew about it when, like, right before it was about to come yeah, up. I, like, knew, I knew it. It was, it was like, they're going to say it. They're going to say it. They're going to say it. They said it. They fucking said it. Yeah, man. They, you, uh, the, the game was so hype, and it's like, damn, I just I just beat this freaking boss, and I'm about to go, go, go into Earth, steal some shit. Nah. Think again. Halo 3, baby. Yes, said to be continued, bruh. Yep. You know, I can't. Maybe I'm blanking. I'm pretty sure I've experienced this before. But the thing is, this didn't anger me, though. Like, God of War 2, that cliffhanger ending got me hyped. I was like, oh, shit. It's going to be crazy. You know? But I didn't get me mad. I, I can't really think of a game that got me angry. The cliffhanger ending got me mad. You know? Yeah. I mean, even the God of War, the, the recent God of War cliffhanger was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I was like, told, you, I guess, yeah, you were hyped, you know? You are hyped, and you you were, like, you're, you're satisfied with, you know, how the, ga- the, the package game was, and you're yeah. like, Completely understand. I said, speak for yourself. I have beef with that game. Uh oh. Oh, Brian, there you go. You found a friend. <laughs> Dude, like when they, they, they show you the map and they're like, check out all these realms. And you're like, cool. So am I going to get to visit all these? And like, you're going to get to visit three of them. And you're like, mm-hmm. but there's like eight fucking towers. And they're like, and you get to visit three of them. And you're like, is there a narrative reason for this? They're like, no, we might just want money later. Like it, 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 it didn't feel resolved in anything. It didn't feel like a resolve in the story. It didn't feel like a resolve in the world building. It just felt like half the game was absent. Like, why am I not visiting these other pillars? Why am I not continuing the story? Because it's a convenient time to stop and get 60 bucks out of me. And honestly, it did the same shit the TV shows do. You know, actually, one thing I, I like doing, stop a TV show five minutes before the ending. You're not going to get drawn into new new conflict. The story is actually resolved. They're just setting up the the, the plot for the next episode, if it's you know a uh, a serialized thing. So yeah, fucking stop five minutes early, and you won't have that crave and that itch to be like, what the fuck is going on? Then when you pick back up, it actually goes in there. Uh, uh, Manny would be able to tell you about this pacing. Uh, they do that intentionally. They cut you off at the most frustrating part, and it's bullshit because they're just cutting you off at the most frustrating part. I don't understand why. It, it's not a good time in storytelling to actually stop the story. And that's kind of the point because they want you hooked to buy the next part. But by its nature, it's not a great way to tell a story. You should tell stories with act breaks, man. But that's never where they stop. And they start 20% into the next act break right before, you know, right as conflict kind of starts. And I, I, I get that's the nature of a cliffhanger. And I that's what I'm arguing. It's like, I hate cliffhangers. It's just a... It's a crappy way to tell a story that gets it gets you what you want, but I feel ultimately leaves the viewer, the listener, the player short change. It, it, it kind of feels like the fucking Hobbit movie. Like, yeah, you, you brought me all the way the the fuck end, like just to fe- fucking see Smog, and now I gotta wait a fucking year for this battle to pick up, and its impact has lost. It's lost all impact. Like that's why I hate cliffhangers because when you come back from them. Most of the time, you're not nearly as jazzed as when you had fucking left him. It would have been better just to tell you more fucking story. 
or at least keep it short enough window that it doesn't fade in your memory. Like having a full sequel or a game that ends with a cliffhanger just enrages me. Because cool, now I'm supposed to keep my excitement up for three fucking years? No, I'm just, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait three fucking years and then replay or re-watch or redo whatever the content that leads me back into it. Because again, we all know that's the better way to do a story. What do we do if we're watching a sequel and we haven't seen the original in forever? We go and watch the original. Because it's not a good way to just pick up with the sequel and be like, yeah, I forgot where we left. Okay, that's my, that's the end of my rant. <laughs> that's interesting. I, I learned Brett doesn't like cliffhangers. So I'm guessing like if you lived in like the 1930s, you would have hated those Flash Gordon serials that always ended on cliffhangers and shit, you know? Yeah, I mean, you, you either have to learn to ignore it or wait. And like some things I do enjoy. Like I did enjoy it with like Game of Thrones, like kind of waiting and seeing what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's fun to binge and everything like that, but I, yeah, like I often talk engrossed in a show, stopping a show five minutes ahead of time because that's the, that that's an act break. Like that's a scene break. That's where you would naturally take a moment and, and then they, they lead him with something else. So yeah, man, it's just cliffhangers I think are bad writing. They're bad writing for the excuse to make sure that you come back next time. But it's definitely not the most... Remember the old school Batman one with Adam West? Huh? Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, off the, I'm off the opposite mind. I think cliffhangers are genius just because of the fact they bring, they force you back next time. You want to see where that shit ends. I'm like, that's actually genius. pretty fucking. They're so easy to do. You just, you just start. No, but it's smart, act. dude. It brings you back. It brings you back, and it's guaranteed every time. You know, that's why they do it. You know, that's why they do it. I mean,. I... I, I, I've had plenty of really satisfying stories, even serialized or episodic, that don't feel the need to put you on a cliffhanger. They can finish what they're doing and then just recognize that you want to hear the, the rest of the story enough. Like, you don't have to finish the whole story, but you don't have to, like, get right to the point where you're like, and then something happens, and we'll tell you what it is next time. <laughs> like, no, man. Like, you, you just resolved a conflict that was part of a larger story arc, then episode break, and then start another one where they're like, okay, here's where we're coming from next time. Like Avatar The Last Airbender is a perfect example. It's one of the reasons I praise that show so much is the pacing and the writing on it is fan-fucking-tastic. Yeah, they, they, there's always something kind of on the horizon, but they kind of end up breaking it up in, in ways that you don't feel an obsessive need to watch the ne next episode right fucking now. You're just regularly looking forward to it. Like, yeah, they get fucking even Attack on Titan. Like, every episode, you're like, why here? Why did you stop? I can't, I yeah. can't watch that in real time. It's too, it's too, it hurts too much, man. That's interesting. Because I, 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 I love that shit. I'm, I'm tired. I, I'm going to be honest. I like cliffhangers. I like being, oh, shit, what's going to happen next? And then the anticipation. I love that shit, man. You know? And I thought Attack on Titan did a great job of it. It's like, that really kept you on the you know, edge of your seat. Like, oh, shit, what's going to happen? No, it next? did. It you did. Know? And fine, like, you know, I mean, really minutes, like, minutes, you're like, oh, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling satisfied. Then five minutes later, you're like, what the fuck? It's just, uh, I know it's a fun way to tell things, like, but I, I don't like when video games abuse them because video games don't come out quickly, you know? If you you know, have Endgame, you have Infinity War, you know, a year later or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh no, it, I can understand you with video games. I, again, I I'm pretty sure there's been a point in my life where I'm like, what the fuck? What is this shit? You know, like with a video game specifically. You know, that's annoying well, when, that's, you, when you spent like yeah. like yeah yeah. I could understand with a video game, but like normal TV, I'm like, it's only 20 minutes, man. Just wait another week. <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah, normal TV. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I don't mind it when they do that. Um, and I'm sorry if I gave the impression that I just yeah. flat hate cliffhangers all that much. I personally see them as a fairly lazy storytelling device. It doesn't necessarily always mean a bad thing. Sometimes simpler is better. But in fucking video games or movies, like, uh, you have to be real careful how you use them. The longer the time before satisfaction, the less I give a shit. Yeah. If, three years comes, if three years goes by from the time that I last, you know, participated in whatever media book movie video game tv show if it's three fucking years later i'm like i don't really care about what you were doing anymore i've just kind of moved on yeah that got so, a war uh, two yeah. ending though man like again i was like oh shit and we had to wait like three years for that but i was i was hyped the entire time i i didn't lose my enthusiasm you know 
What about like the the recent Dad of War that ending? That, that was yeah, no, Dad, Dad of War was about, yeah. uh, that again. I like that. Like, oh shit, shit, let's go. go. You know, that was good. I, I thought that was hyped. fantastic. I'm like, let's fucking like got me. I'm still hyped for that. like what's gonna happen next. It's gonna be fucking good. You know, and, but, but you know what works though, because the rest of the game was so satisfying. Like the core story of that game came to a conclusion, and then they threw this little thing at you to get you hyped. I like that sort of stuff. See, you know? there, there we go, and that's why I think it was like as long as you bring the core conclusion yes. in, don't you don't sever the video game. But I did feel like the world, like I got, I got cheated out of. Uh, like when you looked at the map, you're like, there's gonna be all of these areas open. There's not all those areas open, and yeah. even at the end of the game, like not all the areas are open. Yeah, I know that's a big thing for you. Like, I didn't mind. I'm like, okay, we get a sequel, whatever. We'll explore them later. I understand they need to make another game. They got to tease you, so I, I have no problem with that. So are they going to use the same map on the next game and let you go back to the previous areas? No, they'll probably do something to change it up. You know how video games do it, you know? Exactly. So, like, you show me this whole map, and then you let me use, like, 15% of it. Like, it's a bit of a bait and switch, man. Like, that's, that's, it's, I know it's not a narrative, um, a narrative one, but that still pissed me off. Like, I, I, I was like, where's the rest of the fucking game? Hmm. All right. What the hell were you even talking? Oh, yeah, cliffhangers. Um, Anybody else cliffhangers that you hated? Um, I just need to add, Brett, I too concur. I have, I'm not a fan of literal blue balls. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brett. Um, so, so, yeah, I guess the God of War 2 one, because, again, it was, it was just like... You had worked up all that time, and you had all that frustration and rage, and it's like, okay, cool, I finally got to take down this guy who's kind of an asshole. Yes, Kratos is also an asshole, but it doesn't matter because he's my asshole. So, yeah, yeah we're friends. Yeah, do it. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was just like, oh, okay, finally got to take him down. He's He has run away. He's a, he's a person. I can't mention that word because it offends people. Yeah. He's a person. And it's like, okay, you finally got to take him down, and then it's like, oh, Find out what happens next time on God of War. And it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to find out what happens next time. I want to do it now. Like, he's right there. I'm coming up the mountain. Just wait half an hour again, please. But yeah, I was not fine with that. Yeah. And huh. I can see how Halo 2 was also the same thing, where it's like, hey, finish the fight on, like, in the next game. Yeah, I, I'm just not a fan of games that don't seem to want to end their stories in one game. Like it's not, it's not, it's not fun. You know, it's it's like one of the reasons why I like Avengers or the MCU is that each film is its own self-contained story, but it still is part of of a larger story in itself. That's how games should be if you're building like a like a world or something. It's like, hey, you still have the game, which is all, which is its own self-contained story, but then also a hint at the larger thing happening, not just ending like a few thirds of the way through. Yeah. By the way, this is unrelated, but it still kind of is because uh, it's a gaming friend of ours, Mr. Gary Swaybe. I oh. am still mad at this motherfucker because he, his first novel, Descendant of the Elders, has the ultimate cliffhanger. And I'm like, Gary, what are you doing to me, bruh? Like, I'm, I'm nearing the ending. I'm like, I'm like, well, there's only a couple of pages left. What the fuck? They're not done yet. And then it just ends. I'm like, Gary, Gary, what are you doing, Gary? You know, like, what are you doing, bruh? Oh man! Shout out to Gary Swaby, man. All right, yeah, um, let's get some extra questions in here since we do have a little bit of time. Uh, Mr. Roman Ronin asks us: um, Let's see, is there a game series that you like to troll, not hate on, simply because you think its fans act like crazed zealots? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I have something like that, but I can't think of anything at the moment. Do you, so you guys have a franchise you like to troll on just to piss off the fans no i usually don't give a shit <laughs> it's like whether people let people like what they like and oh i know i know i gotta win i gotta win yeah i smash brothers i will always talk shit about smash brothers those guys are so sensitive man you know oh shit well, who said that otaku man says call of duty <laughs> Yeah, it's not for everybody. It's for yeah, real, man. Yo, oh, Andre, you crazy, man. Um, yeah, for me, yeah, Smash Brothers. That's one. I'm like, I, 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 I my mind is like, it's not a real fighting game. That's it. That sets the guys off, you know. But I don't hate on Smash Brothers. It's you know, it's good for the kids, you know. <laughs> See, I'm doing it again. I can't even help myself, you know. Uh, what about the rest of you guys? Any any franchises you troll on just to troll? Crickets. Crickets. 
All right. Everybody's a nice guy on Throwdown. I'm the only asshole, apparently. All right. I, I, I like to talk shit on Fortnite, even though I really don't care. Yeah. But it's so easy, though. I mean, that's like the lowest hanging. That's not even low yeah, hanging it's, food. It's free. Yeah. Bread, it's not even low hanging food. It's just already there for you on a, in a basket. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. All right. And the last question of the night from Black Metal Gamer. I think we've answered this one before. Um, what third party controllers or accessories did you actually like using? Uh, 8 bit do anything 8 bit do I like Adam yeah. Pouch. You know? Yeah, I love 8 bit. Yeah, 8 bit do. Uh, shit. I liked the Nintendo Max back in the NES days. That was fun. Remember that? It had the little swivel around. It was it's like a thumbstick before thumbstick. It was like yeah, 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 yeah. That was cool. That was the third. Yeah. I liked um I forget the name of it, but it was the the Sega Dreamcast Fight Pad with six buttons on it. That was good. I enjoyed that. For more current ones, the Astro A40 is dope. Placing four controller. There's also the um, the Fusion A um, Fight Pad, which I use for a Street Fighter. Very, Wait, very the cool. Astro A40 is a headset. Is it? I thought it was. Yeah, I have it right here. Show me the fucking controller then. That's not it. Give me a second. I'm going to go off camera. Uh, Adam, yeah, keep talking, these, bro. Keep talking. These are the Astro A40s right here, and then you can take the plates off on the sides there. There you go. What was it? My A40. bad. So, I don't know. He's talking C40, about C40, Adam. C40. Yeah, C? All right, C40. Oh, I can't oh. Fucking hear you. All right, yeah. So, yeah, the C40s. You got, actually, I did, a, I did an unboxing of this with um, Manny. Uh, it was really cool, you know. Yo, um, man. What else? Uh, By the way, shout out to Manny who was <laughs> sending us a, a message, and I'm like, "Yo, Manny, where? <laughs> why aren't you here, motherfucker? Are you in the theater <laughs> sending us this shit? You know, <laughs> you know got the movies. Maybe I think he's that- lying to us, man. <laughs> you want to go see Tenant? Maybe he. Oh shit! Maybe he did go see Tenant. What the fuck kind of movie is that anyway? I'm I'm confused. Five, five, five. It's a it's a, it's a time, time it's a time travel. travel. Oh, yeah. you, oh, you got my attention. Christopher Nolan, too? Yep. By, by the way, Christopher Nolan story. and time travel. That's why I yeah. wanted to make sure it was in theaters because yeah. he wants to make that money. But it's funny because if you look up on uh, through AMC and you look up the theaters that are that are open, you know, you can usually see the layout for seats and then you can see that the, none of these showings are selling out or even close to it. Yeah. By the way, I will, ad- yeah, I will admit not, not to talk about movies so much. Christopher Nolan, I like... I, I thought he was one of the greatest directors of all time for a while. I'm like, yo, this Ooh. motherfucker's the shit. Oh, what happened? Then I saw Interstellar. I'm like, oh, okay. You lost me, uh, bro. Uh, <laughs> Interstellar. Right, let's, let's, fucking... right, let, let, yeah. let us Tenet, fight. Yeah. Tenet is on that level. <laughs> Tony, Tenet yeah. is on that level. It's getting the same reaction. No, but that's not a good... I didn't like Interstellar, man. They're like, what's up with this what? story? Interstellar. Interstellar was okay. You know what? When the movie really, by the way, the the whole physics with the black hole did not fucking work. Like that. That's how black holes operate, guys. You know. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Well, uh, um, everything. I mean, yeah, we do know. It was it was a it was a dramatic nowhere movie full of bullshit fake science. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Um, I, my, the one the one last line ten was, minutes. Yeah. Yes, but everything else was fine, Brett. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, Mass no, Effect. Yeah, the problem is that it built up to the last ten minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Yo, when, when Anne Hathaway yeah. said like the love is the thing that you know, nicely universe, I'm like I'm done because <laughs> I went in there yeah. thinking this was gonna be a hard sci-fi movie, and it was to a point. And then it goes into some other crazy metaphysical shit. I'm like, I didn't want this, man. What the fuck, you know? But even. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Did the I, that's why I don't like that movie either because it goes into some yeah. bullshit. I'm like, what the hell is this? Go, stick with the sci-fi, you know? Like, that's why, uh, by the way, it's funny because I remember I saw Interstellar and then like a few months later, The Martian came out like, that's what I want to fucking see. Hard oh, science. No, no bullshit with that. You uh, know? Andy Weir. I, that's, by the way, th- that you guys learned something about it. That's one of my pet peeves when it comes to sci-fi movies. I hate when the movie is like, Pure hard sci-fi for eighty percent of it, and then it goes into some other crazy bullshit for the eighty percent. I'm like, oh, for right. twenty, I'm like, come Trivia on, time. man. Trivia yeah. time. What? What do name one one important thing that the Martian and, and uh, Interstellar have? Yeah. By the way, that Damon. And that's the funny thing you yeah. say that because yeah. I it, yeah in, in Carlos, it's funny you bring it up because I felt the movie the movie really went down Interstellar when Matt Damon showed up, which is funny because I love the Martian. Matt Damon was in the whole movie, you know. Like when he when he showed up in Interstellar, the whole movie was like, you know. Oh, God. I think 
I, I didn't I didn't really mind the last part. I understand why people it's just, it's so freaking polarizing, and I and I'm not gonna dispute that with people who have issues with it. But I think overall as a package, it's incredible. The freaking the the cinematography. Well, it's the, Christopher the Nolan. Board, yeah. Like everything, every even like the beginning part when when he's traveling and when he's getting when with McConaughey's reading those messages. It's like, yo, man, that shit was crazy. I, I love that movie. I mean, the, the ending I can I can do without. Um, well, not not even the ending, like the, the pre-ending where where he goes into the black hole. That part I can do without. But even even the part where he sees his daughter at the end, that that's fine. Yeah, I like the the stuff that actually got right. Physics works. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's... They even there's there's videos there's actually videos of it explaining it and it makes sense. But the but the fact that I needed to see a video to understand it is is. is... No, 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 no. Yeah. no, 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 hold on, hold on. I am a fan of quantum physics. I watch the uh, documentaries all the fucking time on uh, for fun. I understand the idea of superposition, and that is still bullshit. Quantum physics does not include any sort of time dilation or time travel, much wait, less wait, the ability to affect things. You know what's that? What what didn't have it? Quantum physics? No, no, no. You said something didn't have time travel on it. Quantum physics, yeah. he said, doesn't Quantum have time travel. Quantum physics doesn't have time travel properties. Too. Yes, it does. Oh, oh, oh! Throw that about I the game. I, I, I study quantum physics. Um, I'm, gonna I'm, gonna allow, I'm gonna allow it. I'm gonna allow it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Like, what, what part of quantum physics transcends uh, linear the time space? Or the part where you can put an electron or a proton and put it at the speed of light, and it's gonna travel at a much slower. It's gonna, it's gonna go at a much slower time than we are. No, that just shows that yeah, there's there's uh, time is uh, has relativity. It doesn't show that you can actually. Well, relativity is physics. Yeah, okay, so you, you can dilate time as you like reach the edge of a black hole. Sure, show me an instance where you can where where something is thrown into the past. Anything. Oh well, if if you if if you're talking about the past, then you then that goes against the theory of relativity, and it goes against whatever. Science we have as of today yeah, isn't that what Brett point. just said? That's Brett, what Brett just said. No, but they never went into the past. He's Brett is mad because they didn't go into the past. He's getting messages from his future they, self. They go. They go to the future. They don't go to the past. He's getting messages from his future self. His future self is sending messages back in time. No, not back in time. He's he's getting messages from people when they sent it, but those messages take way too long because he's going into the future. As in relativity to his because daughter. of time dilation. By the way, I actually did. That's one of the things I thought the movie got right. It, you know, if you're near a black hole with all the mass it has, time dilation is going to be really like a, it's going. You're going to really feel it when you come back to Earth and shit. A bunch of years are going to pass. Part, they they did that. get that part right. You know, but yeah, Carlos, yeah, explain to me in quantum physics where you find a fucking uh, library inside of a black hole. And you're able to breathe air and all that shit. Since, since, no, since no scientist has ever been through a black hole, <laughs> there, we can't prove it. Just how we can not prove there isn't a bearded uh, white man on yeah. top of the guy. Is there a giant floating baby inside of there, too? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. All right. Um, yeah, we're done, people. So uh, let's, uh, Adam, you have to pimp anything? Uh, let me see. Do I have anything to pimp? Uh, no, no, no articles, actually. no wrestlecast. No, nothing. No, no, because uh, I mean, the wrestlecast already happened. That was today. I mean, well, the, the pay per view that was payback. That was kind of fun. That happened already. Uh, we got another one coming, but I'll talk about that on Thursday. But right. that's for the next. That. And, about that. Yeah, and then that's it. I mean, it, it's that's it. Yeah, no, actually Ooh. nothing. All right, man. So it's happening, people. In just a few short days, we'll reach episode 300 of Throwdown. Dun, dun, dun. Or I should say, dun, dun, yeah, boo, 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 you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have Mr. Paris Lily on as our special guest, along with Riku Sun One, and we're going to have a lot of fun there. We're also going to have a contest where we're going to give you a chance to win a free game from us. Details coming soon, but it's going to be a hard one that I've been waiting a bunch of years to stump you guys with. So that, that'll be a lot of fun. And we're also going to announce our biggest contest ever. We're taking shit to the next level right so that's september 3rd 10 30 p.m eastern and then sunday at 10 30 p.m eastern on september 6th we're gonna have to run your questions this 
very show that you're listening to. It's going to be episode 300, the AMA special, where you may even hear us talk about science, man, because you can ask us whatever you want, and you guys could uh, ask us three questions, which will be cool. And for that episode, we're going to have Mr. Andre Trisman, who's probably still hanging out in the chat. And Andre, get ready for that, because we're not just going to answer video game questions. It could be anything. So that should be a lot of fun. You know, so stay tuned for all of that stuff because Throwdown can't stop, won't stop. Eh, 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 eh. Won't stop me. <laughs> you know, all right, man. So that's going to do it for us. So make sure you follow us on Twitch and Twitter. Subscribe to us on YouTube and join our Discord, bruh. If I, you can find us on any podcast app by searching for Throwdown Show. That's two words Throwdown Space Show. You can visit throwdownshow.com. You can find all the wonderful podcast apps that we're on. You know, they're all listed right there. In audio boom on the left hand side and for links to all that stuff down below people as always man so once again i was your host tony polanco and tonight i was joined by carlos romero yeah everyone make sure to uh take care everyone make sure to watch uh to get my uh excellence uh issue number five <laughs> number um, nine <laughs> number nine who else is missing that's it yeah all right <laughs> uh adam vale yeah, have a good week, everybody. Brett Murdoch. Let's be real, people. And Brian Monjoma. Oh, uh, don't worry, Tony. Your PS5 won't catch the row now. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> Yo, we'll see you guys on Thursday, man. Episode 300 is coming at you, man. Peace out. Deuces. Peace.